Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to the 11th day of the induction program of HSNC University. We have amid us honorable and beloved provost of HSNC University, Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani, my colleagues. We have a message our colleagues, my dearest students, and let me wish you all a very, very happy Gandhi Jayanti. <clears throat> and today marks the culmination of Seski Centenary celebration of Gandhiji and Kasturba. So today, I, I would believe that this is the day of a sublime celebration, celebration of selfless service, the celebration of devotion to the truth, and to the motherland, the celebration of the dedication of a pure soul to reach the ultimate goal, the celebration of victory with the power of nonviolence and love, and also the celebration of the art of shaking the world in a very gentle way. Friends, let me begin with the iconic statement of Gandhiji, who is the personification of duty and service. Gandhiji said, be the change you want to see in the world. How true, and yet how difficult. But for the person we are going to listen to today, our Honorable Provost, Dr. Niranjan sir, it is the dictum that he embodies effortlessly. Let me share a secret with you all. Long before the HSNC University was launched, a year back, two years back, it had been the foresightedness of Niranjan sir which motivated its creation. Sir has worked rel relentlessly to construct this university, concretizing a dream he has long nurtured, the dream to serve society in a selfless fashion, and very truly providing education and facilitating the development of young minds is the best service one can do for the progress of the society and nation. Friends, the nation is now witnessing the top Indian real estate tycoon geared and set to construct the tallest skyscraper in the land of Indian education. The son of a medical practitioner, commencing his career as a chartered accountant and as a teacher himself, then taking on the roles of an entrepreneur, a leader of several public and private associations, a wise governmental advisor and is educationist himself. I'm very, I take pride, it's an honor, and I take pride to able to welcome our provost, sir. A warm welcome to you, sir, to the 11th day of induction program. It all began with you and it continues under your leadership and under your guidance. To be honest, I, I really do not understand how sir is able to wear so many hats and each one so efficiently as well as fittingly. I would like to add, his intuitive mind coupled with discipline and hard work allows him to remain fluid in the ocean of creativity. But the most admirable facet of Niranjan sir is his integrity ornamented by supreme values of service towards the society. Even the media often recalls his beliefs grounded in spiritual ethics and moral values and so, and so different from most of his contemporaries. All while being extremely winsome, truly, I'm yet to meet anyone who has not immediately been encaptured, enraptured by Sir's vivacity. I consider myself really blessed, or rather I would say we all consider at HSNC University and HSNC Board really blessed to be able to learn so much from Sir, not just an administrator, but education is too, but also as a human being. Sir is truly wealthy because he has a heart of gold. He's one of the finer, finer people who believes in protecting values above all else. So on the occasion of Gandhiji's Jayanti, I'm delighted that we will all be able to hear the person who follows his footsteps to the T. A warm welcome to you, sir, once again, and thank you very much on behalf of all the three constituent colleges HR College, Kesi College, and BDTC College to have graciously accepted to address our students 
on Gandhi Ji Jayanti. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, a very good morning to each and every one of you. Thank you, Principal Bagla, for this wonderful introduction, as well as uh, the invitation to speak here today. Thank you, Dr. Pooja Ramchandani, Principal of HR College. Thank you very much, Dr. Bhagwan Balani, Principal of BTTC College. Uh, it is such a pleasure to meet uh, all the principals, teachers, and of course, my wonderful students. Actually, they really draw me uh, to any call, uh, call that you do because it's so much fun to talk to students who are growing up and have entered the, uh, the portals of our college. First of all, you are the lucky ones. Lucky ones because it's very tough to get admission into HRKC and BTTC. So I think uh, I must uh, be happy to be amongst the lucky ones today. Number two, the most lucky part is uh, that uh, Gandhiji was a part of our country. Uh, and it was, because <coughs> it was because of him that we were able to do an independence of our country by nonviolent means. Most of the key countries in the world had civil wars, a revolution of different kinds, which were actually very, very violent, which ended with the death of so many people. Our uh, partition, uh, our independence of India did not have so many deaths, but the partition of India had so many deaths. So in reality, the paradigm which Gandhiji brought to the country was unique in the annals of world history. Very, very, very few countries in the world have had leadership of Gandhi, type of Gandhiji's leadership, which actually got us independence without violence. And this is looked upon as a difference in the entire world. That kind of change, that kind of revolution, that kind of thought process is now needed again. Needed again in a different sort of way. We've had 70 years of independence. A wonderful country. India has grown beautifully. The GDP of the country has grown. A lot of people who are in the poorer segments of society have moved into the lower middle class. The lower middle class has moved in the upper middle class. A larger number of people have gone into various segments of society and are earning better. Cities have got more wealth. Our country, which was decrepit of food post the uh, uh, revolution which took place, which was called the Green Revolution in the 70s, actually brought about surpluses of food. The surpluses of food and revolution is still uh, carried on today. So our Green Revolution of the 70s have actually provided us sufficient food even today in the pandemic. Uh, we are able to get enough food uh, which comes to us, uh, those who pay for it, and even the poor who are given free food by the government in order to take care of them. This happened because a revolution of sorts really happened in the country called the Green Revolution. Then, of course, there have been various other revolutions which have taken place. The Industrial Revolution brought about a difference in terms of our country, uh, which brought progress wherein we got manufacturing, a large amount of country, brought up steel, textiles, cement, all the other factors came up, urban infrastructure took place, and this thing took place so that we needed. At the same time, we had a change in terms of education processes took place. However, we were always structured towards the British system of education. And we carried this on for many, many years till now. And we have upgraded many of our knowledge bases, but there was no revolution. There was no change, which was a paradigm which took place in the education processes which have happened. Few islands of excellence have been created. The IITs of the world, the IIMs of the world, uh, the good colleges in terms of what you have in HR, NKC, BTTC. Uh, you have the BGTI in terms of it, the Thadumal Shani Engineering College. All these are islands of excellence, but it didn't bring about a paradigm a paradigm in the education process did not take place. And that is why 
today what you are going to see in terms of the changes taking place in education is the brand new paradigm which is taking place a change which is revolutionary a change which is definitely going to make a difference a couple of years ago the hsnc board took a view that we really need to make a paradigm happen we apply we applied for about 10 years ago to create what is called the deemed university they rejected our proposal and they said no we were not ready for it or whatever today we are very very fortunate that the government of maharashtra the central government have created and permitted us a new brand new university of which all of you are a part of and really i must compliment each and every one of you all the members of the board the principals the staff who have taken humongous efforts in order to make this change happen so what is this wonderful change that i am talking about what is it that is not there before and what is it that we are now looking forward in the future let me share with you some stories which take place we have students who have passed by out of our colleges whether it is from art science commerce whether it's from engineering whether it's pharmacy and they go and apply for a job lo behold the employer says oh they know their subjects well my god they even got good marks in their subjects but do they have practical knowledge about the uh, the job that they are taking have they got the skill sets to get into this job or profession have they got any idea of what work is required for the purposes of doing this job do they have the talent or the skill sets in order to make their job happen and sadly over a period of years we found that it was lacking people were now demanding many more skill sets than what was really available to us today's newspaper when i read the times of india uh uh mr vinit jain who is also the owner of times of india and also a chancellor of a university talked about this sentence which i'm going to read out he says every disruption in human history has led to new ways of thinking and let me predict now that the pandemic the situation of the covid-19 will enhance the quality of education by combining the best of online and offline education so here we have mr vinit jain talking about the change which is going to take place during the pandemic times what is the other thing which has happened the other thing which has happened is that we decided to move from mumbai university to our own university that was the second major change which has taken place what is the third major change which has taken place and that is that because of the pandemic my schools my colleges my methods of teaching have been totally sabotaged destroyed i can't go back to college i can't go back to my school my teachers who are used to teaching through the classroom methods are suddenly required to use all digital platforms in order to carry out the teaching and this is another pandemic problem which we have faced so there have been several things which have happened to do it on top of it that's not enough our prime minister prime minister narendra modi woke up and said all these things are okay but i want to make another major change that is going to take place and what did he do he announced the new education policy 2020 to make another change so what is happening actually try and think about it it's a serious issue one we talk about the pandemic which is causing a change we're talking about employers and people in profession saying colleges are not teaching sufficient enough to make you good enough to get employed or carry out the profession all these things and on top of it you can't even go to college you have to do an online system 
Even examinations are now being conducted on an online platform. So what do we see? 2020 is going to be a revolutionary year in education. And all for the positive. This is exactly the change which took place when we became a free India during 70 years ago, when we became a free India. And now, again, if you look at the change taking place, the education policy is also making the new revolutionary change which is going to be there. I can't speak the whole policy change. I'm gonna give you a few ideas and directions which will give you a flavor of what is going to happen. It will give you an idea and direction as to how you can utilize it. How can you leapfrog on this policy? How can I take advantage of it? What is it that I think I need to do as a student in order to take full advantage of all the changes that need to be taken place? So I'm going to share with you certain ideas and thoughts which occur to me, which I think will be very useful to you in the long run, and maybe in the short run too. So it's worthwhile spending a little time with me. Throw away what you don't find useful, grab whatever is useful to you, and utilize it for yourself now or never. That's up to you what you really need to do. But it's just what I'm going to do is a freewheeling of my thoughts, my feelings, my aspiration, and my belief that it's going to be there. So let me share with you my first story. My first story goes like this. In the, I was very happy with Bombay University, Mumbai University, a very good university, which I love very much. And I have been a student of the university and I've done very well because I studied in the university and colleges and I have really been successful in my life. Then what is HSNC University mean when we do this change? So several things are thought and contemplated in the new university. First and foremost, everything and subject is tested with job oriented thought process. So all my subjects and syllabi will be constantly updated to meet the needs of industry. Yes, a lot of it is similar to what Mumbai University does because we can't make the paradigm happen so quickly and so fast that you people will not be able to get okay with the changes. So we are doing it step at a time. So the first new thing is you'll get lots of new things coming into the syllabi which was not there before. So you will have new learning processes of new things that are going to be extremely interesting and possible. If you pick them up, they'll be damn useful to you. If you don't, too bad for you. So it's all up to you, whether you want to learn, you don't want to learn, it's really up to you. We're going to teach it any which way. So that's the first major change that is going to take place. What's the second major change that will take place? And this is again come from people who are in professions. Those people who are in business and industry, those people who are in government, those people who are in leadership, they're all saying, oh my, your student is very, very clever. They're getting very high marks, but they're not rounded enough. They don't have complete knowledge of the environment. They don't read much. They have no idea of what is happening in the entire world. The new thought process now has changed. And that is why we are bringing about what in America is called liberal education, what we call a multidisciplinary approach to education so that you will benefit by being able to take up various alternate subjects. I don't have that list of subjects that are available. I'll give you a smattering of a few of them. So a science student can pick up an art subject. He can pick up literature, he can pick up English, he can pick up yoga, he can pick up digital, he can pick up mm, management and so on and so forth. 
Of course, all this may not be available in the first few months because of the pandemic, but over a period of time, a full flexibility of alternate options will be made available to you. And those are going to be very soon, I believe, put on the website. So you will be able to choose some of those subjects. I don't know whether they are in the first, second, third, fourth semester, but I guess you will get an option to do so. You know what it will do to you? It will give you an option. It will give you an idea and it will give you a flavor of something which is beyond your core subject. And those will always be very useful to you. Because the more the different type of subjects interdisciplinary that you pick up, the more you will be blessed because what you will pick up will remain with you forever. And that's the secret of the new system that we have, which is to give you an all round knowledge and experience, which you are not getting in Mumbai University. So this is a positive story. First positive story, which is there. What's the second positive story in this university? And that is what we will call the credit system. And this is extremely important and beneficial to all the students. But what is it? When you do studies of subjects, you will have a certain number of credits which are available. But you will have optional subjects where you can also accumulate credits over a period of time. And these credits will lie permanently in your account for you which has gained. And when you go for higher education in the second year, uh, the fourth, third semester, fourth semester, fifth semester, sixth semester, your results will give you a diversified portfolio of knowledge, which will indicate to the persons who are giving you jobs or other things that there is a benefit that this student is not only a straight line talk in terms of a single subject, but is an all-round student who understands and able to fix up a lot of this knowledge, which is diverse and this thing, which is what people are now looking forward to. So that's an extremely interesting and different part of it, which the university and the colleges are bringing to you. The third major change that we are looking at is to pick up skill sets. What are the kind of skill sets are we talking about? Skill sets, very important. Time management is a skill set. We would not be able to have uh, courses in that, but we'll certainly look at certificate courses in such subjects. And we would have lectures into these subjects, which would become important skill sets that I believe that we need. Simple skill sets like assertive skills, how to study skills, how to take care of yourself skills, very important in these COVID times. How do you take care of yourself? We have found that students and children and even young men who are 25, 28 and all, apparently look healthy, but they are terribly unhealthy. They are having diabetes, they have cholesterol, they have all sorts of complicated and they are damn bloody lazy. So you have to pick up your bum and start working hard. If you want over a period of time in order to become more immune to viruses and be able to remain healthy, please pick up some exercise very, very quickly. Keep your fitness level high eat more healthy foods. Nothing wrong in gorging on other foods also at five points of time, but not to make it a bad habit. And you got to change to make it to such that you remain healthy and strong. You can get into a gym as soon as it opens. Damn good. If not, there's lots of things on the uh, YouTube that you can look up. Exercises at home during this period are easy to access and do it. If you have a healthy body, then only can you have a healthy mind. So please, for God's sake, to get a healthy mind, please take up a healthy body. And all that activity that you do, fun and games is wonderful. I don't recommend that you don't do it. But remember, by and large, if you remain healthy in terms of fitness, it's going to be very good for you, not in the short run, 
But in the long run, I think it will really benefit of you. You got to throw away the smoking habit. If at all you have taken it up, just throw away that cigarette. It's horrible because anybody who's smoking and then gets COVID, very, very difficult. I run a hospital and I've seen young people suffer and required to go into the ICU simply because they are smokers. So please take care of yourself in order to do whatever is necessary. <coughs> what I wanted to share with you on a second thought was the variety of type of jobs that are now going to be made available. In the earlier days in time, during my college times, there were very limited number of subjects available for jobs. Today, there is a huge variety. Hence, please look at all the different courses which our colleges are giving to you. Also, the various certificate courses which are now being made available. All of them are designed to help you to take up different courses, which will help you even in your future, even if it doesn't look very attractive today, it will be very useful to you in the future time. So that's one thing which I recommend very, very strongly that you have to do. We have taken up subjects which are very different, not offered by any other university or thought process. And that is subjects like yoga, subjects which were never even taught, subjects like dance. You can look at classical of uh, the different dances in terms of our Indian system. And later on, we will look at the Western uh, dancing systems also. But for the present, we are looking at the Indian system of dancing. And those are going to be incorporated and started very soon. So you can even take a minor subject in that or take up these courses, which will actually hold you in good stead in terms of over a period of time. And it will be fun too. Today, what I find is that the students want freedom. Freedom to do what they want to do. Let me tell you that freedom is given to you by the Constitution of India. But success is not given to you by the Constitution of India. Success is given to you by your own ability and being able to take and do the best. So I have a few thought processes in terms of what we really need to do in order to see that we are in that. One of the first things I found out after reading a lot of books and biographies of good people was the fact that those people who achieved great things and were able to reach good things in life always had a fire in the belly, aspirational mode, thought through, I want to become this, I want to become that. It doesn't matter what it is, but as long as it is a positive motivation, not to become a crook, huh? for God's sake. So you learn how to be positive in terms of a positive thought process. You really become a crook. Huh? If you think of the, uh, you know, how to be a crook, then you will become a crook. And in the end, you will land up in jail. But so always think positive things about what you really want to achieve and how you will actually go and achieve that and keep that long term goal in your mind. Of course, those goals may change over a period of time and nothing wrong with that. But remember, if you don't have a goal, you can never reach it. It's like uh, 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 a sportsman wanting to join the Olympics or to pick up a game. It, if he doesn't have that aspiration model, he can't put in the effort in order to make it successful. He has to work hard to do it. So first and foremost, aspire. Second, perspire, aspire, and then perspire. If you can perspire to do anything, work hard, focus on that subject and take it forward, there is nothing that you cannot achieve. Let me tell you, when I entered college at the first year, I was an ordinary student. I didn't have such skill sets. I never had any thought process that I was going to be 
do very, very well. But I was persistent. I persistent in terms of being able to do it. I had a lot of fun too, but I did focus on my subject tremendously. And once you're focused on it and do it, along with all the other activity, I promise you, you will do well. It is not the most intelligent person or students who become successful, but it is the persistent student who becomes highly successful in the final year and highly persistent students will become successful in life. And that is the most important thing. Remember, you have to aspire to a goal, you have to perspire, and you must remain focused on the goal. Irrespective of what happens, if you do these three things, I promise you, you will become very, very successful person. It doesn't matter if you're fighting for the independence of India. This is what Gandhiji did. He focused on the goal. He worked very hard towards it. He was persistent, though it took decades for him to succeed in getting India independence. He only in a dhoti and a poor man at that did that with an andolan, which was unique and different than what everybody is there. I strongly recommend a couple of more things to all the students in order to achieve great success. One of them is search for mentors. Look for people who can guide you. It could be your parents, it could be your teachers, it could be your relatives, it could be your friends, parents. Look up to the people. And if you can't find them, go on the net. I've seen lots of stories of positive mentors on the YouTube. And there are lots and lots of lectures on how you really can do. And if you do that, you will be able to learn a huge thing every day. So must get mentors to do it. The another wonderful thing which I learned from my experience in college was because I came, as Dr. Bagla just told you, I came from a medical family. So I had no business experience. I had no commercial knowledge. I had no idea and background of what business and commerce was. But every vacation, I went as an apprentice in factories. I went to a handloom factory. I went to a tile factory. I went to a textile factory. That is Century Rayon and Gwalior Rayon factories. And ultimately gave me an idea of starting a textile unit, which I did. And subsequently I had to sell that off. But it helped me to give me directions. So an advice is, suggestion is, do apprenticeship during the time of your college vacations, or you can do it afterwards, but it's better to pick up small apprenticeship, mentorship that you must do and read lots and lots of stories of successful people and also failures of successful people. That is equally important. Remember, every successful person has also failed many times. And if, if, and if the person does not tell you about his failures, he's either hiding it or he's lying. Because there is nobody, nobody in the world that I know who has not fallen many times before he has reached the pinnacle of success. And it's there with me also. I will one day share with you all the failures that I've had in many years, which are there before I have been able to succeed in the work that I do, including in this college. I tried to get the university 10 years ago. I failed. But now we worked again and we made it successful. So there are stories of failures and you learn as much from a failure as you make for success. But the wise person doesn't learn from his own failures. He learns from the failures of others. So read the stories of failures of others and pick up that you should not fall in the same trap and fail in the direction in which he's guiding you. So these are the thought processes of being able to really succeed in life and make a difference in terms of how you can be successful. No, you can be very successful. You can be terribly, fantastically successful if you follow the steps of guidance that you need to do. Of course, there are a lot of diversions that we have. 
uh, the mobile is bad enough. TV is bad enough. The internet is horrible. Pornography is another direction. All these things are horrible distractions which really take place. But you got to move away from them and see that you get into something which is very positive. At least spend half the day, if not more, into a positive direction. Your entertainment and all the other things can take a little part of the rest of your life. But unless you don't learn in order to get into a positive story, you're not going to be a successful person or you're not going to be very successful. I found out over a period of time, let me share with you, that most, many, many, many of the most brilliant friends that I had in college, they were brilliant, very intelligent. But in life, they never became successful or they didn't become so successful as I thought they deserved to be simply because they didn't have focus, they didn't have persistence, and they didn't commit themselves to the goal and put in hard work. This combination is lethal. There is no way that you can fail if you have a combination of all this in your life. I know it sounds difficult. It's not. It's very easy because once you take the steps in this direction and make it a habit, I promise you, nothing, nothing, nothing can make you unsuccessful. And that's a promise from me to you. And I assure you that if you do it, you will and shall be very, very, very successful. Now, the story goes on as follows. What is the change which has taken place, which the university, the national education policy, the extra classes that we do. Oh, I forgot one of the most important things. Sorry. That is the extra activities which each of the colleges are running. Wow. There are so many. I think I, I read about 40 of them. If you have an NSS, you have social, you have dance groups, you have programs, you have oh, such a lot of courses and classes or uh, uh, associations that you have. Promise me that you will be a part of many of them. I want a promise from each and every one of you. Don't miss it. It's the best part of college education. Taking part, part of all these extracurricular activities. Take part in one. Take part in two. Doesn't matter. I, I don't expect that you will take part in ten. But commit yourself to one or two or three of these additional uh, uh, things which are there. They are so much fun. They're us, they teach you so much, so much about learning, so much about giving, so much about what I call team work. And that's another story that we must hear. Whenever we deal with the countries like Japan, we have a unique experiments. They come to the negotiating table, four or five of them, but there's a team spirit like this, very tight and strong. They are always teams. They work as teams. In India, we lack that. We work very well individually. But when you put five people together, they're a horrible team. Only now our cricket teams work very well. So learn from the cricket teams of India how they work so well and strongly and play a great game because they work as team spirits. So all these extra activities which are there in the colleges will teach you what is to work as a team in terms of it. Contribute to all the lovely activities that have happened. It will make a world of a difference in order to do it. It will give you leadership skills. It will give you participation skills. It will give you sp uh, skills that will teach you how to work as homogeneous teams. And it will help you in your family. It will help you in your work. And it will help you in the future when you become a leader of the team. It will teach you because you will understand how teams operate and how you can really motivate teams to happen even if you are the littlest member or the youngest member of the team or the leader of the team.
it's an extremely important to have these practices to be done. So what do I see in the next couple of years? I see a wonderful vision. Once upon a time, India had the leadership of education in the world. The Nalanda University had a unique story wherein for almost 1500 years, India had such educational centers that people from all over the world came to study in India. In the next couple of years, just like IITs, IIMs, and these institutions of merit are standing out and are very, very, very successful in terms of the eyes of the world, you will find many more institutions like ours really standing out in terms of significant leadership that is going to take place. And this is exactly the direction in which it will happen. But one more major change is taking place, which was never thought of before. And that is those students who will pass one year of education will be given a certificate. Two years of college education postgraduate would be a, a, a diploma. And the third year will be a degree. And whatever credits that you get will go into your account so that you can always come back to it if you go out to work or anything like that. So it will be possible for you to do those. Those are not yet announced, but it is likely to happen in the next one year where all these benefits are going to take place for your interest to do so. And it will be much, much better in terms of the opportunities that will be available. So India is going to grow. We are going to have a wonderful opportunity of the future. Look at the various thoughts which are there in my mind about the Indian mind. I went to America, New York, more particularly, about uh, in 2008. That's uh, 12 years ago. And we were to raise some money for a fund. And I had a meeting over there and there were a large number of people, mostly Americans, white Americans. And uh, there was a meeting of about 20, 30 leaders of all the funds of the world. On the conversation that took place, I was surprised because one of them said, oh, we are so proud that the Indian mind is so intelligent, you know. So many CEOs in America are of Indian origin. So today we have the CEO of Microsoft, CEO of Google, CEO of so many of the companies in the world are now Indian origin people. So they are the most brainy. But do we use it all across the world in order to come up in the same way as our Indians have done when they have gone to America? Answer is no. And that is something which we really now need to learn. How can we use our brains and knowledge, which have been grossly underutilized over all these period of years, because we took higher education very lethargically. And we really need to do much more in order to take off. A little bit of hard work is not going to kill anybody. And you will certainly benefit in it in the long run. Not only academic results. Let me caution you. It has to be an all round growth of a personality, an all round growth of people in terms of understanding different skill sets, reading skills, speaking skills, negotiating skills, all the skills, skills to use laptop, iPads, all these skills that you really need to do. How can you do all these things along with it? Yes, the subjects which you have chosen are the most important. But remember one thing, you must learn other things also in order to make a complete life. I do not believe that life is only studies. So enjoy a lot of other activity, but make it positive, proactive, healthy activities and not something which you will then regret in the second part of your life when you get back to work. So. I recommend and congratulate each and every one of you for having crossing this very, very important year of 2020, which I do believe is going to be a 
real new step in a direction which is going to make a world of a difference in education in India. And the last story of all, let me share with you. I'm giving you an experience which I had with my own father, Dr. L. H. Hiranandani, who was a ENT surgeon. At the age of 82, one morning when I was having coffee tea with him, he suddenly tells me at 82, huh? Niranjan, I want to go to Germany to learn a new operation. I said, Dad, are you okay? At 82, you want to go to Germany to learn a new operation? From Dr. Plester was the name of the doctor. And I said, wasn't he the same doctor who came to learn something from you six years ago? He said, yes, he did. But he has now found out a new operation which could be improve, which will improve certain type of tongue flap in uh, operation, uh, sorry, of the ear operative work. And uh, so I would like to go and he did. So <clears throat> at age 82, my father, Dr. Hiranandani, L.H. Hiranandani went to Germany for, to learn this new operation from Dr. Plester. So this is the new thing. In the la in, when I went to college, whatever I learned in college was useful to me for more than 25 years. Now it's almost 45 years since I left college or more than that. Uh, so I had to learn a lot of new things. But after 25 years, because 25 years, what I learned in college was good enough for my uh, future in order to do my work. Now, things are changing very rapidly. When you leave college, within five to ten years, everything that you learned in college has got to be sometimes unlearned. And then you got to relearn and learn new things. So remember, remember, you have to learn not only the subject, but you have to learn to learn. And that is going to be extremely important for you. Never give up learning. Whether you're in college, whether you are post-college, whether you are in business, whether you are in profession, whether you are in industry, never stop learning. That's going to be the most important story that I have told you. If you remember this and you continue to learn, you will always be wonderful and successful. And this is what I want each student of HSNC University, of KC College, HR College, BTTC College, to be permanent learners. Every time that you do, you must learn, unlearn, and relearn. And why do I say unlearn? Because there will be subjects which will become out of date. There will be history as far as we are concerned. And you need to learn new things. And this is something which is going to happen faster and faster in the decades that have come. So enjoy the time that you have now, but focus on the vision of the future. Become great citizens, great people, great professionals, and come back to me and tell me that you have enjoyed and become great successful people one day. And I will love and enjoy hearing it from you personally, not virtually. So come and see me and tell me that you have become very successful because you follow, followed the paths of what this university is going to do for you, what the colleges will do for you, what your parents have done for you, and what you have done for yourself. That is the most important. Don't start thinking that the teacher should do for you and the college to do for you and the parents to do for you. Time has come where you have to learn what you can do for yourself. Be selfish. Do for yourself. Learn for yourself, but learn for the long run and for the future of becoming great people. Have a lot of fun, as I did. Have a great innings of your life and all the very best. I'm sure we're going to beat up again and again, hopefully, very soon. Thank you very much for inviting me today, Dr. Bagla, Dr. Ramchandani, and Dr. Balani. Thank you very much.
So uh, I believe that uh, today I'm reminded of uh, words of Sadhguruji, and I read somewhere uh, when he said that a human being is like a seed. Either you can keep it as it is, or you can make it uh, grow into a wonderful tree with flowers and fruits. And I believe your words uh, are as valuable as uh, fertilizer or manure. Uh, because these words will take them. Actually, they have shown the roadmap. You said aspire, perspire, perseverance, uh, focus on goals, putting hard work, and uh, above all, the positive mindset, proactiveness, and yes, enjoying as well. The, the, the future roadmap, also there's a lot of fun and uh, fun quotient. So I believe uh, uh, you have given promise, you have given assurance. They are, they are at the right place at the right time. And today they heard the right person. So thank you so much, sir. But before we actually, uh, uh, it comes to an end, but we will have some questions from watching you on YouTube. So Saksham must have uh, transferred those questions on uh, this uh, chat box. So can I uh, ask Saksham to take forward the uh, program ahead with questions? Any questions? Ma'am, Joshua is handling the questions. Who's? Joshua, Joshua uh, uh, sir, uh, let me introduce her. Uh, she is the one from uh, the placement cell of HR College and has taken the responsibility of creating an, uh, and she has started an entrepreneurship and incubation center in HR College. And they have already started working with various industrialists. And one more idea they are working on is uh, uh, we are celebrating 60 years of HR College. And uh, they are now going to trace 60 industrialists, top industrialists, and create a book for HR College. Alumnus of uh, industry uh, toppers in industry. So Joshia is heading the team. And today I told her that she should look at uh, question answers and uh, of students in the chat box and on the YouTube. So over to you, Joshia. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much sir, for this enlightening session. Uh, so, so I'd like to start with my first question. As you rightly mentioned that it is such a rev revolutionary year this year and uh, we'll be entering into a new world. So a lot of things have changed like the online system and the teachers have adapted so greatly and so wonderfully, especially at HR College, like the teachers and the faculty have adapted so beautifully. So how do you think this new system will be different from the previous system in terms of the online teaching, like when we enter the new world? Uh there was a time when uh, we didn't have iPads and uh, laptops, but we were still able to uh, learn, read, write, and do so much activity. As long as we treat online system, the virtual system, as a tool, there is no problem. So whether you learn through an online platform, whether you learn offline, there are advantages and disadvantages of both. So for instance, today I'm sitting at home and I'm able to talk to people who may be all over the city, if not the state or the country, or even in the world. So you have a positive use for online education. And so there are positive elements of online learning. Tomorrow you have missed a lecture and we have recorded it. We can send it to you online. So that could be an advantage that we could do. Teachers would be finding it very useful to record some of the issues, pick up ideas and thoughts, and pass it on to the students in an online fashion. And this is going to be the new thing. So any change that takes place, how do you use it as an asset and not as a liability? That is the secret. So whenever you have an asset with you, Use it positively, whether that asset is in terms of money, whether it's an asset is in terms of online system of education, whether it is an asset of any kind that you have. You either can use it, misuse it, or even abuse it. Take a knife, an ordinary knife. You can use it for chopping your vegetables and stuff in order to cook it. And you can use the same knife to murder somebody. Uh, so is the knife good or bad? No, the knife is not good or bad. Knife is just an instrument. The online system of education or any other instrument like a mobile laptop or iPhone or iPad 
is only an instrument. How you use that instrument is up to you. You either use it positively or you abuse it. That's up to you. You watch pornography. It's an abuse of the system. You use it for learning, relearning, watching, entertainment, movies, etc. That's a positive story. So how is to be done is not the instrument. The instrument is just an instrument. You learn how to use an instrument in a proactive way to give you positive results. Good question. Thank you, sir. Uh, so my next question is, uh, as you've done CA, what are your views on the CA profession in this pandemic? The CA? Sorry, the last part of your question. Uh, what are your CA? views on the CA profession in this pandemic? CA's profession in a pandemic? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, any profession in a pandemic is going to be viewed differently post-pandemic and the present pandemic. For instance, the chartered accountants won't be able to look and go and see and verify physical assets, for example. But then you could have a video taken, uh, you can go online systems to do it, you can have CCTVs to do it and do physical verification of assets. A lot of things will be different because you can't go to a client's office for stuff. So a lot of it is going to be done on the digital media. So the post-pandemic will in the change of the profession of chartered accountancy would be equally applicable to legal profession, for example, because there also a lar large number of cases in the high court and Supreme Court is now done through the virtual system, just like we are talking now. So there is going to be a change which will take place, but will the change take place for the better? For instance, example, let me give you another example. We can do education to the masses in the villages through an online system where teachers of HR, KC, BTTC can teach those underprivileged students in the rural areas who may not have good teachers available to them. So we all use our media and system, not only for chartered accountancy profession, but for all profession. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, so the next question from a student is, are collecting credit points compulsory to graduate like other colleges and how does the credit system work? Well, the finalization of the final credit bank, as is mentioned by the national education policy, is not finalized yet. As far as Maharashtra government is concerned, I have been appointed as a member of the board to make the recommendations for what it should be done. So I think by end of the year, uh, we should have a great idea of exactly how the credit system will work on a national level. Internally, we will be announcing very soon of the credit systems which will be available for various courses that we are conducting. But those are internal credits. How this will be applicable externally will be decided by the government, both at the state and central government. But our scheme of credits will be um, announced, some of which was already announced today but some of them will be announced over a period of time. So for instance, next week or so, we should announce yoga, we should uh, announce dance and drama, uh, national performing arts, digital uh, education. All these courses are going to be announced in the next fortnight. So you will be able to understand the credits available there. But I can't tell you about the national system yet because those are policies are announced, but the details of the policy are not yet out. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the next question is, uh, did you ever think of becoming a doctor like your father? <laughs> you have picked up a very, very sensitive question. <laughs> the answer was, uh, I was actually afraid. My father was very hardworking. And so was my elder brother, who also became a doctor. And whenever I got up in the morning, my father was off to work. When I went to sleep, he barely was talking to some patient or the other on the phone to advise what it is. My, my elder brother was 10 years older to me, used to work so hard in medical college. I actually feared, and he was very, very good student. So I always was afraid that could I ever become a good doctor because I was not as hardworking then as I am now. So I thought I feared hard work. But later on, I realized that even chartered accountancy is not easy. And life in business is still more difficult than a medical profession. 
So, I mean, at the end of the day, we all learn the truth, which is, it is universal what you take. It doesn't matter what you take, but it's just that uh, there. But my father was disappointed at the initial stages of what I did. But later on, when I became successful, he was quite happy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So the next question is, uh, how will the job market and internships be affected uh, from this pandemic? The job market is going to see a world of change. As you know very clearly, this pandemic has created a problem in many industries, including construction, hotels, aviation, restaurants. All these businesses have had been dire effects. The other industry businesses are also negatively affected. So we'll have to see how these are going to really pan out over a period of time. But hopefully, sooner or later, we will find a vaccine. Sooner or later, we will get what is called the herd immunity. One of these two things should happen in the next couple of months. And once that happens, hopefully, very soon, things will be back to normal. But change will still continue to happen. Thank you, sir. And uh, so the next question is, what advice will you give to the aspiring and budding entrepreneurs of today? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a very uh, uh, long, uh, long answer to a short question because uh, an entrepreneur actually goes through a lot in life in terms of uh, he has to have a vision. He has to have a passion. He has to have a willingness to work hard. He has to have the ability to be able to fall and get up again and fall and get up again, and fall and get up again, and fall and get up again. If he's not able to do that, then he shouldn't become an entrepreneur for sure. But all this having said that, there are so many positive aspirations for an entrepreneur, which is challenging. And one of them is to be ability to adapt and change according to the situation. Thank you, sir. And also one more question. In this dynamic world, what do you think is the most important skill set, skill set that uh, students require? Oh, I've mentioned all of them. Uh, yeah. Really, I've already told you a lot of them. I don't have anything to add for the present, except for the fact that I do believe that uh, discipline is very important. In life, if you learn how to be disciplined, uh, I think a lot of things fall into place. Discipline can be, I want to learn a sport. So I'm after that sport every day. Second is passion. But there are so many things. Thank you so much, sir. And my last question is, what would be your message to the 2020 COVID batch? Um, I think <laughs> you are the lucky ones. You are the fortunate ones. You are the loved ones. You are the blessed ones. The country is going to go very much forward. Believe in the country, but first believe in yourself. Don't believe in anybody else, but believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you can achieve anything that you want, but you must believe in it and you must work towards it. So young lady and all your colleagues, believe in yourself. And I promise you, you will be wonderful in the future. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, to Pujam and him, like I am, did take over. Uh, Principal, ma'am, with your permission, I would just like to ask something to Naranjan, sir. Of course, yes. Pandila, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, there is just a small uh, comment which I thought you should add to this platform that uh, uh, what are we planning for the international linkages uh, which these students will benefit from? I think maybe I, if you have said, I may have missed it, but I thought if you could. No, I didn't say that because uh, I, I, I had so much to say that even if I spend three hours, it won't be enough. But thank you very much for pointing it out. Very grateful to you. Uh, we have starting international linkages. We are working with Deakin University. We are working with uh, colleges in the Penn system in America. And we are hoping that we will be able to use the credit system over a period of time in order to benefit you so that those who have accumulated credits here will be able to get partial credits availability in the international system. So we are working towards that. Uh, you'll be happy to know that some announcements are expected very soon, but they are expected, not sure. But we are working towards it, and very soon we'll be able to give you some good news, I hope. And uh, But we'll constantly work with international 
thing where we will have when the post covid time student exchange teacher exchange and also being on online to be able to teach where our teachers will teach internationally and the international teachers will also teach here but we are also working towards cross teaching among our colleges so those from our colleges can teach the other colleges on the board and in the city yesterday i had a talk with flame university in pune and they have agreed to cross teach between flame and hsnc university so we are going to get all the positive elements of a post covid story thank you very much for pointing and flagging it up thank you, thank you. Sir. it was a pleasure listening to you thank you sir So, Dr. Pooja, I wish uh, you to deliver a vote of thanks. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Niranjan sir. Uh, my colleague principals, uh, Dr. Hima Bagla, Madam, Dr. Balani. This eleventh day of induction program and the day of Gandhi Jayanti, I am feeling special to say a very big thank you to a persona and an institution by himself. honorable provost dr niranjan hiranandani our trustee our mentor i will call my parent a big big thank you sir you rightly said when you began that students are lucky to because i would say they are lucky because they are mentors like you who are mentoring our institutions as trustee as provost of hsnc university and hsnc board that they are going to get uh, uh, the personality and a mentor from industry well exposed to our students taking students from days of independence to the changes that have happened in india especially in the field of education is what you started with emphasizing on the need of skill development and employability sir you made a point that there is a need for new ways of thinking in the field of education especially during this pandemic time and thereby taking advantage of digitization 2020 as you said sir is a revolutionary phase in the field of education with the coming of uh, introduction of new education policy of 2020 you highlighted the changes that we are bringing is as hsnc university with a new thought process of bringing in holistic development of students with multidisciplinary educational choices and credit accumulation as a benefit to students that will be offered by our university we saw a parent in you today when you were telling students to take care of themselves in this covid times guiding them to go and play games hobbies taking advantage of the freedom that constitution has given them but with a sense of responsibility aspire and perspire along with our focus your mantra and a major takeaway for students and all of us today from the the talk that you delivered your mantras for students that i started that i will now follow is searching for mentors reading autobiographies of great personalities internships learning from failures of self and others teamwork learner for life at any stage and leading a disciplined and integrity life was some of the mantras that as i said as principals as students as faculty we are taking from you every day when an institution have a mentor like you who is well read experienced traveled across boundaries students of our three institutions are bound to get a new quality of education par excellence a big 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 thank you to you sir and we promise you as you said that as uh, you want to meet your students not on a virtual platform but on an offline uh, in your office in our institution and i promise you sir and we are very positive that a day will come that covid time will go away and we will meet uh, personally to you sir thank you so much sir for taking your time out today this morning and guiding our students on this special day and i felt that uh, we were talking about gandhi jayanti today but i saw a gandhi today speaking to us 
thank you so much today and as a as a parent a great respect and a big thank you to you sir thank you thank so you. much sir thank you so much dr ramchandani thank you bagla thank, thank you, you balani thank you so much thank you so before for all of you so dear students uh, you uh, you met today uh, dr niranjan hiranandani uh, of course in digitally virtually but very soon you will see him in the auditorium uh, of hsns university so uh, before i end let me tell you tomorrow we are meeting again at 11 o'clock and uh, we will have with us miss sabira merchant those who do not know who is miss sabira merchant let me tell you she is has a signature way of teaching communication skills grooming body language public speaking confidence building social etiquette art of answering spontaneously with flair and finesse corporate dressing and fine dining etiquette so i do not know what she will touch upon but let me tell you tomorrow you have a meeting with her at 11 o'clock yes uh, this continues next week also we have couple of more sessions because is a request of parents to meet uh, certain sports people or from banking so we are continuing this induction program for you so be there tomorrow 11 o'clock uh, the same platform and if you miss out do watch it and do share also with your friends and your family thank you so much and thank you uh, principal bhagwan uh, bhagwan balani and uh, principal pujar pujar all the students and teachers uh, who are present today and all the students of hr and kc enjoy and celebrate today is a gandhi jayanti at home. but remember take down all the pointers uh, what you learned today because whatever he uh, dr niranjan uh, conveyed to all of you they are, they are excerpts from his life experiences and imagine uh, you can, you are getting at this uh, particular age how lucky how fortunate you are that you are getting to meet uh, such stalwarts so please maintain diary and uh, we shall ask you when we meet you uh, i mean in the, in the colleges what have you learned so you must maintain diary quite possible we will ask you to even report keep make a report so thank you so much and we'll meet you soon thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you sir Thank you to I'm, all the students of HR and KC and the faculty of HR and KC and BTT. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Bye. It everybody. was an inspiring day for all of us. Yes. So, you can end the meeting now, Monish. Yes, ma'am.